Gorilla Physics. Yeah. I've worked on many, many big gigs um, with big acts um, from corporate all the way up to uh, to rock and roll. So here's just the real basics of waves then. The, firstly, the wave quantities that you're going to need to know. You've got to know uh, a lot about frequency, a lot about wavelength. Um, the wavelength is the length of a physical wave from peak to peak. Now I must say that students when they draw wavelength they often don't go right from peak to peak. They draw it somewhere around here. Well that's not going to be correct. It has to be that exact. Amplitude, yeah. The amplitude is a little bit harder to uh, get your head around. Well we've got to imagine a undisturbed position. Call that the equilibrium position or the zero position. Now, we want to understand where an amplitude is. So I'll draw that in red. The amplitude is from the peak to the equilibrium position. It's the height of the wave, but it is not the full height from peak to trough. It is only from the equilibrium position to the peak. You can draw it from equilibrium position to trough down here. Again, make sure you go right from one to the other. Not an arrow which kind of points is somewhere around here. Exactly from here to here. They need to be that specific on exams. Um, I'm a sound engineer. Um, I uh, I work for uh, my well, I work for myself now. Um, I used to work for an AV company um, and uh, learnt the ropes and how to uh, to use sound. Uh, and then lastly, the third important wave quantity that you need to know about in this basic introduction is what a frequency is. Now, a frequency is not the number of waves. I haven't got a frequency of, uh, let's say, two here because I've got two full cycles. Frequency is number of waves per second. So what that means is if I had a time, if it took one second between here and here, then I would have two full waves in that one second. So I would have two waves per second. And we use the unit hertz, HZ. So the frequency would be two hertz. Well, with sound, there's obviously you've got sound waves, different types of uh, sound waves from sine to square uh, and various others and uh, it's important to know about these different waves so you can uh, so you can know how to to EQ out a, a room um, and um, you know map the sound so that where you've got a big arena you can use um, certain bits of software um, if you know about sound sound waves and everything um, it's easy for you just to plot where you want to put your speakers um, so the coverage is is steady and constant throughout you need to recognize there are two different types of waves the one I've just drawn is a transverse wave it's not an up and down wave so don't get that wrong and this one is a pressure wave or a longitudinal wave. You don't just have to recognize them, you have to be able to describe what is the characteristics, what makes a transverse wave a transverse wave, and what makes a longitudinal wave a longitudinal wave. Well, a transverse wave is oscillating at right angles to the direction of energy transfer. So the energy is going this way and the vibration or the oscillation is going at 90 degrees to that. We remember for a transverse wave the oscillation is at right angles to the direction of energy transfer or the vibration is perpendicular to the direction of energy transfer. Now in the longitudinal wave, the energy is still moving in this diagram from left to right. 
but the oscillation is also moving in that same direction. So once more, we don't describe it as a side-to-side -side wave or um, anything like that. It needs to be absolutely clear the oscillation is in the same direction as the energy transfer. We would say the oscillation is parallel to the energy transfer. So use those two words. The, in the transverse wave, the vibration or the oscillation is perpendicular to the direction of energy transfer. In a longitudinal wave, it is parallel to the direction of energy transfer. And particularly what frequencies are bad in certain rooms. You have to ring out a certain room. Every room is different. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's something you should, you should learn about. Um, there's a lot of uh, maths and a lot of physics involved. I've done a lot of traveling. Um, I've been all the way around the world. Um, in fact, next, uh, the end of this month, I'm going to Puerto Rico. Um, and then back from Puerto Rico to China, then from China to uh, the Philippines. Um, I earn enough money to, uh, to, to, to travel and, um, and have days off when I want. Um, so I own my own company, so it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's good. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I, earn, I earn enough money to get by. <laughs> I've worked all across the UK in different venues um, and uh, it's great if you don't want an office job mm. nine to five then providing that you want to put the work in um, and do unsociable hours then it's quite rewarding. Stay in school kids. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video from Gorilla Physics. I really hope you've enjoyed it and if you have why not go ahead and subscribe. I hope you found it useful, so please tell your friends and every like and share that we get helps us be more useful to more people.